Stand by for action. Thanks, to the United States, Milner. I am the Unpleasant Blind Guy, and I want to welcome you to part two of this episode of the Unpleasant Blind Guy on EDL Radio. Now remember, if you want to contact me with comments, questions, show suggestions, awesome American suggestions, I'm available at UBG Contact on Twitter, or I can also be found as Dave Milner or Agador, that's A-G-G-E-D-O-R, on Mublet, the Tea Party Community, Spreely, Mines, MeWe, or Gab. Now let's begin. Thank you, Dave, for um, playing that, finding that tune. I couldn't for the life of me I think what it was called at that moment in time when you're live and it just flicks out of your mind, you know. Uh, but, um, yeah, thank you for that, Dave, because you've yeah. been on the ball as yeah. usual. Oh, man. Got, thank uh, you as well for oh, the slides uh, tonight as well, Dave. Great slides, by the way. Mm. And... Um, I've got to say this, Dave. I've got to say this to our listeners out there. Um, yesterday, when I I heard this news of Mark, I only heard yesterday. I was devastated. I was devastated. You know, I, I didn't realise that he had a life-threatening issue that he was having to deal with. I didn't know, and um, it took the wind out of my sails yesterday. And I spoke today and I said to him, he said, Jeff, don't worry, I've got this, I've got this, don't you worry about it, show mate. And that's what I'm saying, this is where, you know, my, my friend, my dear patriotic friend was there for me and I was, you know, I was quite upset as Dave knows and, um, you know, when you lose one of yours, a great soldier and a great patriot and a... Uh, an EDL man that was a proud, proud man. Uh, he wanted to do things. When he wanted to do things, there wasn't everybody that agreed with with with, um, with his way. But he he, had to, he wanted to say things what needed to be done. And some of the times it was taken up and it and it was done. Things was done. Um, so that's that's my memories of this this man and. Uh, maybe if you're listening in, guys, and maybe you'd like to uh, uh, call in um, to make, uh, maybe you can speak a bit about uh, Mark, how, if you knew him, um, knew him well. Uh, as I say, there's a lot of people that, that knew him very, you know, quite, uh, it was a good friend, who like, I know, um, back in the day, Dave Bolt was a good friend of uh, Mark's and many others. Many other people, but I had to, I had to do something um, to speak about, um, you know, losing one of our own. Once again, we lose another one. Uh, you know, it's so it gets to you, doesn't it, Dave? You know, you think you know, all the things that life can throw, and there seems to be more. It just keeps coming and coming and coming, and um, it just uh, it is what it is. You know, it's, it's the way that life throws a horrible hand out there uh, unfortunately but he was a proud man and um, may his journey to Valhalla, whatever place you want to be, I'm sure you'll be there Mark and as I said, my thoughts and my prayers with Debbie and me and, and the family they was only married to Schultz I'd been together for years but they decided to tie the knot in 2018 anyway Dave let me pass it back to you um I think we got to, uh, got to uh, uh, play uh, some. Uh, we got to play our jingles, haven't we, mate? Our jingles. Well, Jeff, um, what well, if one figure? If you want to have a look at your Skype, oh, I'm getting yeah, a pretty yeah. serious oh, echo. Pretty... So oh, what I'm, I want to do I'm... is go ahead and begin go the first be... of the Danny Tomo the audios Danny... Uh, from London, and you can call back in. There we go. All right, guys, there it is. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Danny Tomo recorded these on the, uh, the uh, 29th, or the, this first one I'm going to do, on the 29th. Um, actually, he recorded both of them that we're going to do on the 29th. And this first one, guys, as Jeff calls back in, uh, is, um, is 
less than just over six minutes long. And this is Danny Tomo in Green Park uh, at the Veterans Encampment um, where they were preparing for the great gathering in London yesterday. Okay, and uh, some of you guys, you know, um, I'm sure this is this certainly got zero coverage from the fake stream media in the UK, and I'm sure uh, American brothers and sisters, you guys didn't even know about it, unless, of course, you listened to this show and you knew that, that the gathering was coming up. Uh, so you really had no idea that any of this was, was going on. But this will give you, this first Danny Tomo audio will give you some background. Uh, he's going to be talking about the people that attended uh, this, uh, you know, this first day of, uh, of this great gathering in London. And, uh, Jeff, I'm going to go ahead and run this now. This is six minutes and one second long, and then and then after that, you may go ahead and uh, do the old uh, the old uh, promos and stuff like that. But I uh, you know, before we do, it, the, the, the gathering had started. They had gathered in the park um, on the Friday evening. Just wanted to let you know right. that, Dave, for 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 our listeners out there. Uh, go ahead, Dave. All right, yeah, yeah. I mean, it. it um, you know, they, they didn't just materialize there on Saturday morning. They already had their tents up and everything. They had been they had been coming in since uh, since Friday. This is this is bigger, I guarantee, folks, than than the news is is well than the news is telling you because the news is telling you nothing. But you get news from here and from TR dot news and places like that. Anyway, here you go, guys. You're listening to the English Defense League Radio Show. Six minutes on this one. This is Danny Tomo in. Green Park, London. So, the last video I did was down in um, Parliament, uh, where the veterans gathered to give their, their speeches. Um, incredible scenes down there, uh, regiment, all different regiments down there. Some real, real brave people that are making, uh, making some real good uh, comments about what's going on. And before I, uh, I show you what I want to show you, I just wanted to talk to you. I'm so disgusted by the mainstream media, as always, that things like the climate change protesters on the bridge, that they would heavily invite these people into their, into their studios to talk about climate change, yeah? But then you have thousands of veterans who have fought for this country in different wars, leading back to the, you know, the 80s, the 90s, into the new, new era of the war with Afghanistan and Iraq, and there's not one mainstream media here. No one. These guys, I mean, what I'm about to show you, I don't know if you've, you've seen a lot of this already, you've probably, I think people like Tracy that way, I've shown a lot as well, but these guys are, are dedicated, the dedication to try and get justice for, for the veterans. Let me show you what, they, what they're doing. So, this is the camp for the veterans. You've got all the bikers that are coming down, I am Soldier X, remember that campaign? Melanie Shaw there, look, on the tent. And I was, I mean, look, why wouldn't the mainstream media want to cover thousands of veterans coming together, setting up camp for the justice of veterans? Why wouldn't they find that important? No, it's not Speaker's Corner. Let me, sorry, I should have told you, it's Green Park. So Buckingham Palace is just there, yeah? Buckingham Palace is just there. But, I mean, look, there are hundreds of hundreds of guys here that have come down in their vehicles and they're pitching up tents and they're refusing to move until they get justice. So, I don't know if you remember back when we had Gus in um, near Telford. He, uh, he was in the middle of winter. It was, I remember I stayed up there for the night with Tom and it was like minus four at night time. You know, it was, it was horrendous. The, the rain, everything. So, people that came to that, please come down to London over the next week if you, if you can make it. Come and support the veterans. Come down here with some food, come down with some water, come down with equipment for these guys. These are the guys, when people attack us, these are the guys that go, go out and they fight on our behalf. Yeah? So how, how, how the mainstream media can't come down here and report on what is going on. I'm totally disgusted. Let me walk you through the camp a little bit. Let me walk you through the camp. So these are the bikers. Just walk you through. 
guys, I met guys that have come down from Newcastle, Sunderland, Liverpool, uh, Manchester. They're literally all here. And they're not moving. They're not going to move until they get the answers they want. And the answers that they want should have been given to them years ago. And the, uh, I believe that uh, a lot of the, the guys are still down in, uh, in Parliament. How many tents there are? So, so oh. Green, Green Park in, in central London, opposite, um, opposite Buckingham Palace. Please, if you care about the veterans, if you care about our armed forces, you know, I did a little stint in the armed forces. I, I didn't ever be deployed anywhere. Um, I, I did my phase one and phase two, and then I was I was injured and I had to had to leave the army. I was absolutely gutted. These guys have spent years and years, years in the army, in the RAF, in all these different armed forces, and they're completely and utterly being let down by the people that are supposed to be there to protect us. Look at the amount of people, uh, veterans that are living on the streets at the moment. These aren't even these guys. These these are separate from these guys. They're trying to prosecute the, the Northern Ireland veterans and it's so, so important that if you've got some time, got a couple of hours, that you come down here and you just show your support, you've only got to come down here with a, with, a, with a crate of water or some fruit or something for these guys to show you support. So I would ask every single one of you, if you can, to come down to Green Park and to come and support the armed forces that protect us when things go wrong. I'm just going to find some people to, uh, to, to have a chat with. I want to find out why they're here, where they've come from, uh, and what they can do to find out you know, what we can do to help them. Because everyone's got to be talking about this. This is one of the most important things that's going on right now. Okay, This is one of the most important things that's going on. So please, support these veterans, share their videos, share their communications, any, every platform. Get the people to listen. Because otherwise, these guys aren't leaving. And I, if I'm talking to them... This, about 10 minutes ago, they genuinely are not going to leave until they get the answer they want. And it's just justice for their veterans. Why are we looking at getting more and more, veter uh, more, and more people to join the army? When they, why would they join when they're being treated like this? Our armed forces are being treated worse than dogs at the moment. The veterans are on the streets. Gus stayed and lived, was in a tent for, I don't know, I think he stayed for a month. I think he stayed for quite a while. And he suddenly he got a bit of justice for what he was looking for. So I'm hoping these guys get the same and I'll come back on once I can speak to a couple of people and find out why they're here, what regiments they're from and what they're looking to get, what answers they want uh, from the government. Thanks very much. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, guys. There you are, guys. Now, what do you yeah, think of that one, Joe? The D notice was up. The government has put a D notice on covering any of veterans... Um, you know, the demonstrations and such, oh, it's the same. Typical. It's, it's been like this for a long time. Yeah. This shows you that we live in a, a definitely an Orwellian time where our, our veterans who fought uh, the wars of these, uh, these um, deranged uh, politicians who sit back and just send the troops out there to die on foreign lands and that, sit back uh, drinking their champagne and and uh, so I know they will do a good job, those chaps, don't you know? At least we don't have to fight. We'll just send those chappies over there to of do their job. Not. You know, yeah. that's the whole attitude. It's all to do with the class, the, the, the elitism, and um, our soldiers, do, in their eyes, are just fodder. Just fodder. Go there, shed your blood. Kill as many people as you can, even if you die yourself. And uh, but they do it not for the politicians; they do it for the country, for the shilling and the queen. That's who they do it for the country, oh. not these phony politicians. But it shows you how this, ladies and gentlemen, if you listen to this, you might be in other parts of the world. How disgraceful to treat our veterans like they're just no one. They mean nothing. And it shows you not one, not one outlet, mainstream media outlet, recorded anything to do with those men that were still and I fighting look. And, and lost their comrades and the government turning their backs on them. No wonder the government, certain people, had white feathers sent to them with, their, the, with the medals sent back. 
Don't mm-hmm. blame them. And if I would have sold, I'd have sent my middle back with the white feather. White yeah. feather. Yeah. I think it's disgraceful. It's demeaning. And and I'm, it upsets me to think that them soldiers put their life, their lives on the line. A lot of them didn't come home from different campaigns. You know, and it shows you, as, you, as Danny was saying, look at the, the veterans living on the streets. They're OK bringing in all these foreigners to take over uh, our homes and all that. And all the time, they cannot be bothered to help veterans have the people that protected the country. I think it's the most probably the biggest disgrace, apart from other things, with with the grooming that's going on in this country, and they're turning their backs against that as well, simply because they're implicated in a lot of grooming themselves. Scummy bastards. Excuse my language mm. tonight, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, it's got to be said. Yeah. Dave, but maybe you want to comment yeah. on, on that. I was, I was disgraced. Yeah, well, it's disgraceful, isn't it? Yeah, I got you know, I got to say it first off for our American brothers and sisters. What what Jeff is talking about, the white feather, that is an indication of cowardice. That's like sending a chicken feather to somebody. OK, so that yeah. just to clear that up, it's a technical thing. Uh, now, as far as the gathering goes, you guys, are, uh, you know, again, in the United States who aren't familiar with this are going to get to hear a little bit of the reason for it in the next Danny Tomo audio. Uh, but but basically to uh, you know to boil this down to basics, what it amounts to, you guys have seen in the United States of America some of our own soldiers and uh, Marines and whatnot being put on trial for a quote unquote murder in places like Iraq and things like that. And and as it turns out, they were just doing the job they were trained to do. Uh, okay, and that's that's kind of what's going on here, except it's even worse. In this thing in the UK, uh, these are older fellas, you know, in sixties, uh, seventy years old, uh, you know, people in 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 their in their sixth decade of life are being put on trial for stuff that happened well, during. Well, seventy-seven. The gentleman who's, yeah, who's, yeah. who's dying, right. Dave, who's yeah, having things. Yeah. He's, he's dying. Um, seventy-seven uh-huh, yeah. years old, this, ladies and yeah. gentlemen, and, and they want yeah. to put him on trial. Um, in Northern Ireland. Continue, please, Dave. Sorry, yeah, mate. I yeah, just yeah. His age. Well, thanks for that. Yeah, thanks for that correction because that means he's in his eighth decade. Okay, and he's not alone. If you guys think that's going to be the, the the first and the last one, think again. This is all for political correctness. This stuff happened in Northern Ireland. Okay, most Americans didn't even know a lot of what was going on in Northern Ireland. Um, you know, and and with the Northern Ireland conflict, with now what we call the Troubles, um, until the, you know it it trickled over into the United States. Jeff, I can tell you this: it trickled over into the United States when events happened, like Lord Mountbatten being killed, and things like that. And and people, uh, I know there are, there are some of you listening to this that are too young. He's blown up. Or he's, he's, right. Yes. Boat, he was on the yes, blown up. Never rains, mate. That's that's what happened to yes. Lord Mountbatten. Yeah. Yes, by um, the IRA. And some, the IRA scumbags. Yes, by the IRA. That's that's what I'm talking about. That was about. That was the only time usually when things like that would would trickle over into the United States. But this was uh, this was major terrorist activity that was going on. Um, you know, uh, you know, in Northern Ireland, and then it migrated to the UK. Uh, you know, Jeff and Jan can well remember the 1970s. That's what, when this stuff is going on from, guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When when terrorist attacks were going off all over the place. If you saw a bag, for instance, just sitting down, um, you know, by a store or something like that, you did not go and open up that bag. Well, you shouldn't do that even now. But back then, yeah, it could that could have been a, a bomb from some IRA puke. Um, you know that's that's the point, guys. And they're trying they're trying to put these guys on trial now for actions that they did in the line of duty as soldiers. That you're talking about like forty years ago or more. Okay. The, the treaty was about a betrayal to the soldiers. Though this is the whole thing. The the, the Friday Agreement, the uh, the, um, the Easter Friday the, Agreement, was all to do uh, with. Um, Basically, um, giving in to the terrorists and um, making concessions that uh, no, no RA 
uh, will be uh, will be perse- uh, prosecuted, um, but the the army will be. So there was a concession there, and uh, they made that. They made that, and this is what you're seeing coming to fruit now, with soldiers wanting mm-hmm. there, they wanting them to stand trial. I don't think you're going to see too many of them soldiers stand trial. So I don't think, I don't think yeah, the veterans will Yeah, they won't be alive. I really, really well, don't. Um, well, that's part of it, yeah. It, yeah. But yes, that's the thing. Yeah. That's Sorry, part of Dave, it. Just, some of these, some of these guys aren't even alive, ladies and gentlemen. Some of them aren't even alive, you know, because this this stuff happened that long ago. This happened two generations ago. Uh, you know, this these fellas that, that they want to put on trial, like grandfathers, the great-grandfathers now, and they want to put them on trial for the sake, yeah, as Jeff says, partly for the Good Friday Agreement, but also for political correctness because being a soldier is yeah. bad. Being, being toxically masculine is bad. So, yeah, let's put the, let's put the mean guys on trial. Yeah, okay, guys, you know they they need to get a friggin' grip. Jeff, if you don't mind, I will go ahead and play the second one, the second audio from Danny Tomo. Uh, you know, um, are you ready for that? Yeah, go for it, guys. All right, I, I will. Um, and what I'm gonna do, guys, is is just uh, you know clarify here a little bit. I did the best I could to clear up the audio in this. Jeff and I were talking, and, you know, Danny got as good a place as he could as for my placement as, you know, was humanly possible. And, you know, as does sometimes happen when people are giving speeches, there were people having conversations and whatnots in the background. But I think you guys are going to get most of this. This is just under eight minutes long, okay? And... Um, you guys, give this a listen. This is the veterans themselves saying this stuff here. So, uh, please give this a listen. You're listening to the English Defense League radio show.
and come home in joy, the king and a general service medal. For many, it was our first medal. And for many, it was to be their last. Perhaps awarded posthumously to a parent or a loved one. When a soldier dies in service, the media sometimes reports, and the people grieve. A government spokesperson sheds a crocodile tear and makes a standard statement from a default template that explains that those responsible will be brought to swift justice. But seldom does that happen. When the boots on the other foot and the soldier takes down the perceived threat in accordance with the yellow card, those same ministers roll over like a pack of university educated Labradors with dogs extended to appease the very terrorist organisation and political wing that we were protecting them from. Our government is not fit for purpose. Has no honour and no code to rely on service personnel to carry out their dirty work while they exist in a utopia where their hands remain clean and then call us terrorists. We have news for them because that sentence there is just bloody as the trigger man. So ministers, whilst you're prosecuting our veterans for alleged crime in a trial without jury, Take a look at yourself in the mirror and you'll see a real criminal staring back at you. <laughs> you thought these prosecutions would go unnoticed and would be assigned a small footnote in Anglo-Irish history. But you were wrong. You have entered into the veteran arena. And we are tapping, and you are tampering with that that we hold dear. The British veteran community is going to make your political life hell on earth. You'll probably take me down, and that's fine with me. Because as I fall, another veteran will rise up behind me and oh, yeah. show me. Yeah. We call this the Spartacus effect, and I am Spartacus. Oh,
Great. That was an yeah, amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay, there was a little bit of talk in the background, but unfortunately, that does happen. But you mm-hmm. know, what got me is when he said um, we'll create mm-hmm. a Spartacus effect. You know, one falls, another one will rise. I'm Spartacus. No, I'm yeah. Spartacus. Yeah. And I got uh, what he meant. You know, and and how true that is. Uh, I don't think um, these politicians really understand really understand what's going on inside people's minds and the way that they are pushing pushing everybody, their citizens their, and their, their veteran soldiers mm-hmm. and the other soldiers, they're pushing so hard. I, I, I think, I, I look at the, the government, um, at what they are proposing to do with this uh, gender thing, whatever... Um, mm. You know, global sort of warming and that. Um, I think what they expect over the next few years is um, soldiers uh, will not be the soldiers of old, but they'll be marching into battle wearing tutu, tutu <laughs> outfits and uh, a ballerina outfits when they sent them over. We're going to dance for you. We're not going to do anything. We're just going to dance for you and. Uh, do ballerina things. Is that what they they really think of us? That's the, the thing that they, they... What are they trying... Oh, is it because they got their EU army uh, that they just want to pass it all over to the EU mm. army, Pesco, and uh, uh, do away with our military totally? Is that what they want to do? It seems that way because they're not listening and they put a D notice on what was going on. They do it all the time. There's protests all over this country every bloody week. Another they country, too. They've not got any Another mainstream country. media yeah. covering it. The only people you get yeah. is people like us, citizen journalists. Mm-hmm. Because you know what? It's a citizen journalist who's going to take over. They're going to take over, they're going to build their own platforms, they're going to have their own media, a totally unbiased, totally in your face of a media that is speaks on behalf of the people in this country. Because you're not seeing that at the moment. It's just lies and, oh, you, you carry on watching your TV shows, we'll feed you that, and then we'll still be robbing you left, right and centre. It's got our job. It's what we're supposed to do, like, you know. That is the whole attitude uh, that these, uh, these elite and globalist uh, mindset, these people. Tommy got mm-hmm. rid of them, isn't it, Dave? Isn't it Tommy got rid of this uh, global, global idea of theirs, this new world order crap? Let's bid it, yeah. totally. And that's a call to the people out there. It's time we've done away with this bloody political correctness garbage and all this, what they're trying to transform our country into a, 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 a sort of a, a sixth-century shit hole. Justice, please, then. Well, I'm not happy, nor is the rest of the country. You should, you should speak to real people, not just that certain people who are handpicked especially for you to give you their praises because they're paid to do it. Speak to real mm-hmm. people. Go on to estates. Go on to some of the estates like Tommy Robinson lives. Go and see what it's like to live in these communities which you've turned into, um, you know, sort of something like out of, uh, I don't know, Mo- Mo- Mogadishu or something like that. That's what it's starting to look like. Look at our streets in London, bloodshed. There's a death, two deaths, three deaths every day. It's not getting better. What, what you've got some idiot there, this uh, Islamic little slag bag, what is his, what's his name? Uh, uh, Khan, I would have called him uh, a different word, and it ends in T, hmm. but I won't because I'm not that bad. But uh, no, you, you know what I mean, Dave? And I think most yeah. of us would agree with that he is that. Um, and he, uh, oh, it's that, don't worry, it's just all part and parcel of living in a big city. Is it really? Look across the world. I mean, we're, the, we're worse than anywhere now. I think we're worse than bloody uh, Chicago at the moment now, Dave. That mm-hmm. is unbelievable. Well, mate. I think unbelievable. it is as bad as Chicago quite yet, Jeff. But you know, you did hear Tucker. You did hear Tucker Carlson talking about. 
Yeah, yeah, you did your Tucker Carlson though, talking about how the knife crimes there are more stabbings now in London than there than there are in in New York. Okay, and that's pretty bad, people. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? You know, um, New York has always been. Uh, you know, let's face it. Even even when Rudy Giuliani was mayor, New York uh, was was well known for its crime. He cut back on some of it because you know he went he went medieval on on the criminals. Wow, what a concept. Uh, you know, but still. Uh, you know, and, and it shouldn't be that way for London. Uh, it really shouldn't be that way, for, or anywhere, or anywhere. You know, but when you put these lefty policies in place, this is what you're going to get. Now, Jeff, I'd like to go ahead at this point and run the SHR media promos because after this, we have uh, something from uh, Tommy Robinson we want to run. So, with your permission, I'll go ahead and do this, and uh, we'll close out this uh, segment of the English Defense League radio show. Sound good? Yeah, yeah let's, that's right with that. All right. All right, guys, we're going to let this fly. Now, right now, we are affiliated. This show, the English Defense League Radio Show, is affiliated with SHR Media. And many of SHR Media's programs can be heard at shrmedia.com and through Spreaker, including my own, The Unpleasant Blind Guy. Um, And, guys, this is some of the great programming you'll hear on uh, the SHR Media Network. Um, And here you go. This is about three and a half minutes. You're listening to the English Defense League Radio Show. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network. Hey, this is Michael Wright. And I'm Shannon Wright. Join us for The Right Way with Shannon and Mike, Monday through Thursday from 7 to 9 a.m. right here on SHR Media. Why are they joining us? For fun things like sports, politics. Oh, maybe some news and entertainment? And all kinds of other things. Money and recipes and events, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so join us Monday through Thursday, 7 to 9 a.m. here on shrmedia.com. From a public locker inside a dilapidated Long Island rail station comes a show designed to piss off liberals using truth, facts, and ridicule. The Lid Radio Show, featuring the conservative voice from the People's Republic of New York. The Lid himself, Jeff Dunnett. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on the SHR Media Network. Go to shrmedia.com. At Lid Radio, we fight for the truth, the justice, and a good kosher T-bone. If you don't listen, Hillary Clinton might sneak into your bedroom in her house coat late at night and blame you for her election loss. It's the Lid Radio Show with Jeff Dunnett. It's your business diva here, Melanie Collette. I am inviting you to a front row seat as I discuss some of the most intriguing details of wealth and finance with today's movers and shakers in the world of business. Listen in and discover financial truths on a global, domestic, and household scale. Uncover topics that will impact your wallet today and in the future. Money Talk with Melanie airs Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. East, 2 p.m. West, right here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Talk Radio. You can't afford to miss it. The new show on the SHR Media Network, Sackheads Against Tyranny. On shrmedia.com, go there quick like a bunny, 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, every Wednesday, live and direct. On the SHR Media Network, shrmedia.com. Be there. Broadcasting behind enemy lines in occupied California, a mere two miles from the state capital, the bloviating Zeppelin's Berserk Bobcat Saloon Radio Show can be heard every Tuesday and Thursday night at 8 p.m. Pacific and 11 p.m. Eastern, only on the SHR Media Network. Go to shrmedia.com to listen. You can also watch on the SHR Media Facebook page and the SHR Media YouTube channel. No goldfish were abused in the making of this ad. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network. And that is it for this time. Next time. 
Part 3. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for listening, and may your God go with you. Goodbye. The Unpleasant Blind Guy is copyright 2019. Anno Domini.